This is the second reading selection for the English 20-2 reading comprehension test, The Family Nobody Wanted by Helen Doss. I tried to be philosophical about the weather, the way Carl was, but more often I was like a nervous hen who has just hatched chicks. So many tiny children under my feet, a bulky furnace which worked only on weekends when Carl was home, and the times we got snowed in were all periodically frustrating. Any day, summer or winter, was a good day for the children to drop trinkets down through the furnace grating. But this game gained momentum with the first chill of autumn, and reached new highs during the long, cooped-up days until spring. The heat from our furnace was caught in an outer shell, which funneled up from the basement to, to a large register set in the living room floor. The holes in the grating of the register were the right size to allow about half of the children's toys to go through, which they soon did. In spite of all I could do, every loose button, coin, toy, wheel, pin, pencil, spoon, or trinket that little fingers could find eventually wound up in that secret and inaccessible place between the inner and outer shells of the furnace. It was a rare game, more fun than mailing letters or playing drop the clothes pin in the bottle. The worst things they ever stuffed down the furnace were the balloons. Someone, somebody had given us a huge box of balloons which, with frugality, should have provided fun for 10 years. One freezing morning I gave each child a brightly colored balloon to play with, so they would be amused and stay out of mischief while I went to the basement to wrestle with the furnace. It took sweat, tears, and the last of my patience to get the fire going, but by the time I left the basement, it was really roaring. When I opened the door into the kitchen, black smoke billowed from the living room. A searing stench hit, hit my nostrils and burned my eyes. Where's the fire, I yelled, my heart pounding as I stumbled into the living room and started sweeping little children into my arms. Susie was sitting near the register, weeping bitter tears. Bawoon, all gone, mine, she sobbed, pointing toward the furnace. All bawoon's gone. The smoke was all originating from the register, so I set my armload of children down. Then I noticed that the big balloon box had been snitched from its hiding place and was lying on the floor, completely empty. I rushed to the register and knelt down, almost burning the skin from my knees. As I peered with smarting eyes through the smoke, I could make out darkish puddles of bubbling rubber sticking to, stuck to the glowing red top of the furnace. There was no way to reach the mess or clean it up. Donnie started toward the kitchen. I'll get a pan of cold water to pour on. The acrid smoke continued to sting my eyes and tears were streaming down my cheeks. Don't bother, it might crack the furnace open. I blew my nose with a loud honk. Donnie reappeared in the doorway. You shouldn't cry about it, he said. Those balloons aren't any good now, I don't think.